let's talk for just a moment about the rules of creating a course outline. And if, like anything else, there are rules. Number one, it should be neatly organized. You want to have a neat organization for your outline. And understand that you're going to be under enormous pressure. It's inevitable when you walk into your exams. You're going to have a lot writing on this, and you're going to be depending very heavily on your outline. It's got to be neat. If you've never been neat before, this is the time to turn over a new leaf because it's very important that your outline is very neat and organized. Roman numerals, alphabet, numbers, basic stuff, okay? It has to be legible. You have to be able to read the thing. You can't have, you know, uh, scratching out and crisscrossing and all kinds of uh, murky material on your outline when you get to law school. It has to be something that is legible. You have to be able to read this thing because a lot, a lot is writing on it. So make sure that it's very legible. And it's got to be easy to understand. If you have certain kinds of codes that you use or abbreviations, that's fine. Just make sure you understand them. So as you're going through the outline, Read it regularly. Reread it so you, you have an understanding. But don't put things in there that you're going to forget. You say, oh, what does this mean? Because in a law school exam, that's not the place to be trying to decipher. What, did I, what was I trying to say when I wrote the you know, M, MXZ? I don't know what you meant. And you can't sit there trying to figure it out. Okay? And it may become, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how one picky little point of law could just become a Part of an enormous, of a part of something of enormous value to you in the middle of a, of a law school exam. So make sure that, that what you do is, is 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 easy to understand. All right, so let's talk about it. What what is in a course outline? What 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 do we include in the course outline? All right, if you you're going to have Roman numerals, you start with a subject. Okay, you start off with a subject, whatever that's. If it's contracts, it may be. Uh, uh, Offer and acceptance, whatever whatever it may be. Contract formation, offer and acceptance, offer acceptance. Okay, um, you start off with the subject, whatever the subject within the course is, and then you talk about the principle of law. All right, there's going to be in most in most cases you will find that when you are studying the law, your professors will provide you with a majority view and a minority view. You are responsible for both. Why? Because that's the way the game is played. They want you to tell them everything. So, write your outline accordingly. Draft your outline so you start off with the principle of law under the majority view and write down the you know, subcategory, the elements. What are the elements of this principle of law? Next you have the terminology. There's going to be certain terminology, if it's, if it's contracts, if it's criminal law, if it's property, whatever it is, there's going to be certain terminology that you, for which you are going to be responsible. You've got to write it down. You've got to put it in your outline. And there are key phrases, key buzzwords that will be used by the professor in the cases. You'll see them in your horn books. You'll see them in the outline. Do not paraphrase the phrases. Do not change a good word that's in a case for a word you think sounds better. This is not a creative writing exercise here. Okay, It is very important that you use the language that they provide to you. Don't change it. Use it. Because those words are key elements to scoring points on your exams. Okay?